The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the September 26th, the terrific Tuesday edition of today's Trader's Edge show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. Now, the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 11 o'clock in the morning. I do want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But even more important than that, and that's this, during this next 53 minutes, I am here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone, dial on in at 877-927-6648. Now, if you've got a question but you can't dial in, you can always send me an email. For that, send that out to Steve at TFNN.com. And inside the subject heading, please put radio show question. Now, if you're inside our Tiger's Den, well, then any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Terrific Tuesday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. Right now, you got a sea of red out there. That sea of red is all the U.S. indices, all the sectors inside the S&P 500. Dow is down 279 points, about eight tenths percent. A little over one percent for the S&P, 47 points there. One and a quarter percent for the Nasdaq 100, 182 points. Five points for the Russell. One percent for the semis. That's 36 point move. One percent for the trannies. 147 point move. Gold is off. 17 bucks, nine tenths percent. Silver's down 24 per, uh, cents. That's off 1%. Light sweet crude is up a half a percent, 46 pennies. A quarter percent for the uh, natural gas contract and the 30 year treasury down nine ticks. Trade out at 114.18. So, where are we going to begin? I'll tell you, we're going to begin with a question that came in yesterday. I didn't get to it, which was to a review of the US dollar index. Uh, first, there was a question inside the Tigers, and that I did answer. I didn't get the other one in the detail with regard to the correlation between the US dollar index and the ES. Mini. And that's a chart that you're looking at right now. So the top portion is the ES mini. Center portion is the U.S. dollar index. And the bottom portion is the correlation. Now, the correlation setting that I have right now, let's go check it out. I believe it's a 10-bar setting right now. We'll pull this over here. And uh, yeah, we do have it at a 10. So that's 10-day average. We can change this here to a five-day five average, which is about this shortest time frame. I think I can put it to three. But here, if you take a look at even just a five-day average, when bars are at the bottom of the uh, below zero, I should say, that tells you about an inverse directional relationship. When they're above zero, you've got they're both moving on average in the same uh, the same direction. So you can see that the U.S. dollar index and the ES mini predominantly, as we speak right now, even on a five-day average, has a inverse relationship. So that's important. That's important for us right now. At some point in time, that is going to break apart but it's not broken apart just yet. So that's important because if we're going to be calling for a potential short-term bottom or some type of bottom inside the ES Mini, well, likely we're going to need to see the U.S. dollar index top. Kinds of makes sense, right? Okay, so now let's go over and take a look at the U.S. dollar index and see what's going on there. We're going to switch over to my white background charts here. If you give me a moment. We'll take a look at those currency pairs that make up the U.S. dollar index. 57.6% for the euro, 13.6% for the yen, 11.9% for the pound. Those three make up 81%. That's why I really don't spend much time on the Canadian loony, the Swiss uh, corona, Swedish, uh, Swiss franc, Swedish corona out there because it just doesn't make up enough to have a substantial impact. It does have an impact, but not a substantial impact on the direction of the U.S. dollar. Well, what do we know about the euro here? The euro is not showing us any signs of a bottom. So the largest weighting inside the U.S. dollar index as we speak right now is not showing any signs of a bottom. Yesterday, it negated a buy the D point pattern. That buy the D point pattern formed out here with that three bar 
uh, uh, a morning star candle formation. As soon as price closed below the low of that pattern, that was at 1.0633, and that was yesterday, indicated that signal. So now what's needed in order for a bottom to form, a potential bottom of the euro, and if the U.S. dollar index is going to top, it's certainly going to need that inside the euro. You need to see another bullish reversal candle. Now, that's not likely to happen today. Maybe that happens tomorrow. Right now, we've got a small-bodied candle. Yesterday was a much wider-bodied candle. That's why I say it's a little bit more difficult to generate a bullish reversal candle. In the case of the U.S. dollar, Japanese yen. You can see prices trained above the green oscillator and change line. It does have a road momentum indicator signal that's been triggered, but it needs a bearish reversal candle to confirm that pattern. So it's got potential, but that potential says I still need a reversal. Now, today, right now, we've got a little bit of a doji candle. It's too early in the session to know what the candle is going to look like out there. Doji candle would mean that a market is getting tired out here up at the highs. But you still need that bearish reversal candle. We take a look at the Great British Pound. Today has entered bar number nine of a TD nine count. That says that the pound should or could bottom between today and tomorrow. Remember, the low of a TD nine count can take place on the bar following bar number nine. Now, with regard to the Great British Pound, which has the best setup right now for a potential bottom, it should or would move up to its oscillator and change line. Now, we can see that that oscillator and change line for months has been a key resistance level. So it would have to be two consecutive closes above that oscillator and change line, currently printed at 122, to then really put some real weakness into the U.S. dollar index. No reason to spend time on the other currencies other than U.S. dollar index. So just simply expand out the uh, chart. You'll see that we are going to form bar number nine today. Again, that high of that pattern can take place tomorrow. And I would say based upon what I'm looking at here with regard to the euro and the yen, at least as we speak as 1112, that's a more likely outcome than today being the top inside the U.S. dollar index. Hope that makes sense to everybody. Now, if we close this chart out, which we're going to do, and we're going to take a look at... I don't know what's going to pop up. I hope it's the euro charts. That is the euro chart. So we take a look at the euro charts. So you'll see even on a weekly basis, we are going to form bar number eight this week. So that says you could see a, a, a decent bottom out here, but you're not going to get that until we get the U.S. dollar on a day. I'm sorry, the euro on a daily basis to generate a bottom signal. So we look at the intraday charts out here. Do I see any signs of a bottom, right? When you form a TD9 count top or bottom in this case here we're looking at a td9 count but are not a td9 count any kind of a bottom here it would have to be just simply a buy the d point that's the only pattern that is present on the euro as we speak right now well if we're going to see that we would see some bottoming signals on the intraday time periods for example the 30 minute do we have that and the answer is no we do not we don't have that on a 60 minute time frame i don't have any kind of a bottom signal here nor do i have the 120 the 240 and the 300 that's why it looks like to me that if the euro is going to bottom we won't see that today it's more likely going to take place tomorrow so it's more important really to take a look at the underlying instruments within inside the u.s dollar index uh because here did i just close out the wrong thing oh i sure as heck did that's okay i can open it back up though just takes a moment, which is I was going to look at the U.S. dollar index. It's multi time frame charts out here. So let me pull those up. Yeah, I didn't have those up, I don't think, but that's what's coming up right now. OK, I had, I had the euro charts up. So now we take a look at this. Um, if we were just to focus on the U.S. dollar index chart. Uh, and, and its intraday time periods and ignore the holdings underneath it, uh, we'd be doing ourselves an injustice. If we're looking for some type of top to form inside the U.S. dollar index, well, if we take a look at that 30-minute chart, you can see that nice roads momentum indicator top that formed. But now price is above profile levels. It's likely going to go tackle that recent high. We've got some tops out here on these intraday charts, but it's really, I think, all about the euro. So keep your eyes on that. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. Adding stock options to your portfolio can be a major game changer, but the full complexities of these instruments can oftentimes elude even the most experienced traders. Whether you're a seasoned trader looking to sharpen your knowledge on options or you're completely new to the market, Teddy Kekstat is here to help. On Wednesday, September 27th, from 4 p.m. to 5 p.m. Eastern Time, Teddy is hosting a live stream that will teach you how to capitalize on time with calendar stock option spreads. Teddy will also go over how to trade stocks and other market movements without large capital allocation, how to expand portfolio diversification, how to maximize potential returns, basic entry and exit techniques, and more. If that wasn't enough of a reason to attend, Teddy will also be answering all questions live. 
If you're serious about making money in this market, head over to the front page of TFNN.com today to sign up for Teddy's live stream. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. Call, call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, uh, folks. I uh, just uh, went to a black screen out here. There we go. We uh, solved that uh, issue. Uh, so I'm in the middle here of uh, getting a couple of charts up on my screen. This one is for Dizzle inside the Tiger's Den. And Dizzle is interested. He's interested in trading the uh, silver contract on a 5 and a 15-minute basis. His question was how the market profiles help him. So what we're going to do out here is we're going to set up those charts. I'll switch over. Uh, if I'm not already on that panel, give me a moment here to see where in that guy I'm at. Just getting this set up. Yeah, okay. So give me a moment. We'll pull over those charts, and we'll take a look at it. So I'm going to put a 5 in a 15-minute. In a now, Dizzle, yesterday when I talked to you about profiles and what you were looking at, what I suggested, even if you're trading the intraday charts, you've got to know what's going on up above you. You've got to know what's going on on the larger time frame uh, that you're trading. So what's going on on a daily basis? That's going to assist you with regard to your intraday trading, right? You want to trade in the same direction uh, as the uh, general – as a general pattern is concerned. But here with regard to, so we're gonna take a look at a five minute time frame chart for silver. And it's not just the market profiles that you should use, although they're helpful, uh, are very helpful, especially on the intraday trading out here. But if we just take a look at the patterns, the patterns that you and I talk about each time uh, that we do this uh, show out here. First, with regard to the last five minute bottom that took place in silver, that happened to be wave number seven. Wave number seven right here, you'll see that letter G. It's a very small portion of the Chapman wave um, out there. And it's just one of the uh, tools that we use. When you get to that wave seven, that was confirmed at 940. Uh, this morning, 940, yeah, 940 this morning. What that led to was a nice rally. Now, you have those profile levels out here. Those profile levels formed uh, on a five-minute basis at 945. And it set up both your support and resistance levels. Your resistance was up at about the uh, 2323 type level. And we can see price gets up there. It hits it. It rejects it. It bounces back down, tests the bottom of the profile. And then you finally get a breakthrough. You got a breakthrough at 1005, a follow-through on that second bar at 1010. And then what did it do? It went ahead and proceeded to make 
break a TD9 count top. That TD9 count top is held. Now, there's also a new profile that it formed out there. In fact, there's a new profile right now with regard to silver. So the TD9 count top forms. What does it do? It takes price all the way back to where it had broken out from using that TD9 count system, 2314. So if you were short at the TD9 count top, you would have certainly closed out that position as price was getting close to 2314 or at 2314 out there. So now we know that price is sometimes you pull back to a breakout level and that is a bottom. So if you wanted to reverse uh, uh, trends right now and you're going to the upside, know that your battles right now are 2318. That's the bottom of its profile and at the top at 2323. So that was going on on your five minute time frame. With regard, and so the profiles are helping you to understand where are your resistance and support levels out there. And that's what's the real benefit. If you're trying to understand why did price stop out here on this rally? Now, that might have been a nice question with the wide ranging bar. Why did price stop right here at about that 23? The profile was 23.22 out there. Why did price stop there? Well, it's real simple. If you had the profiles, you would have known that that, and that was a bearish structured profile. I mean, the center, it was a little bit closer in proximity to the top than it was to the bottom. So this is more sellers that were inside there. And overcoming those sellers is a beautiful thing because that tells you about a breakout. And here on that second bar above that breakout level, getting on the five minute at 10.10, that was a nice early entry point if from an intraday uh, trading standpoint out there. So those market profiles, they're helpful to us if we take a look at the larger time frame for silver. So we're going to switch off of this chart. We'll go back to the black time frame charts. I'll go to my nine pen market up chart momentarily we are trading the December contract out here as we take a look at what's going on in silver here just simply on a it's a very narrow profile out here both the bottom and the center are at the same level and that's at 2332 this is important to understand out here why because if we get a close below that today we're inside that swing point right now that uh, generated a daily TD9 count bottom on September 14th and if you get a close below 2326 what this tells you is start looking for intraday trades to the downside to get back and test perhaps it's just a rising trend line you can certainly draw that in on your daily time frame or maybe it's just simply going to be the low of that swing swing and that low is at 2255 out there that's what's going on in a daily time frame somebody taking a look at his trading lights we crude as an example what do you want to know about it well you want to know that it's just consolidating between support and resistance support at 8738 and resistance at 9180 everything else in between that is just about noise out here so that's uh, at this stage here that's the best that i can do for you in a short period of time with regard to the market profiles uh, go watch hours of archives of the uh, show that i do on uh, the trade yet you'll see these profiles coming into play all of the time out there so i hope that that helps we did have requests to take a look at a couple instruments i think i only have two requests out here so let me just close now nah, i'll leave now nah, let me close that out just close this chart out i don't need to save that or anything and let's get over and uh well you know before we go take a look at those instruments here let's get back to the let's get back to the uh to the general markets, because I spent that first section uh, really taking a look at what's going on in the currency area and its correlation, because it really bleeds into our next conversation. So if the U.S. dollar index is going to top, and it has potential, right, it's really going to be key about what's going on inside the euro out there. Uh, and we know that that directional correlation or inverse correlation exists between the equity markets and the king dollar out there. Well, you can see that today is going to become bar number eight of a TD9 count for the ES mini, or should. Now, in order for a TD9 count, so this is really important for those of you that are trying to trade the ES mini intraday, knowing that we're oversold, looking for a move to the upside. I would say today is too early to do that. Too early to do that. One, because of our look when we took a look at the uh, what's going on inside the U.S. dollar index. And second, because in order for a TD9 count bottom to form tomorrow, price must close below the close of bar number five. And that close is at 43.72. So even if you get some kind of rally out there, which would be a nice 50-point rally, I, I hear you, Al. And we'll uh, see your home screen. Oh, geez, sorry about that. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thought maybe it was a caller. I'll listen to that bell more often. So now we're back on, uh, on the proper screens out there. So thank you to Al for pointing that out. And everybody in the den must have been sleeping, not paying attention to what screens I was showing out there. Uh, now what did I just do? Oh, my goodness. I just lost. Oh, no, there we go. Okay, now we're back. 
Okay, so here we take a look at those charts for the ES mini. So you can see we're going to form bar number eight today. For another, another for bar number nine to uh, occur or form out here, and that's the most likely pattern. It's not the only pattern. We've got the A to B equal CD that's going on. Price must close below the close of bar number five. That's at forty three seventy two out there. It's still a nice rally intraday. Should we get it? I don't. I'm not suggesting that we are going to get it just yet. We haven't looked at the intraday charts out there. The daily time frame for the NQ is also going to form bar number eight today. Now it's triggering an A to B equal CD to the downside. That's a, that that as well out here. So I would say if we pay attention to that US dollar index, we don't see the euro give us any kind of a turn that is trying to generate some type of bottom and some type of counter trend move, then probably the NQ goes ahead and does a A to B equal CD to the downside. And the ES uh, goes ahead and does more than a one to one move to the downside. So that's just a potential that we're taking a look at. But we are in bar number eight, both in the NQ, the ES, and we're also in bar number eight inside the down. Now we love synergy out here, but we're not getting the Russell 2000 to show us any kind of love. In order to show us love, believe it or not, we want to see yesterday's low. We want to see a spike below that level. We didn't get that yet. In fact, if anything, yesterday's low for the uh, Russell 2000 equity future contract was down at 1780.40. Today's low, 1782.30. So you'd like to see, now that could take place tomorrow, and there is a new profile that is attempting to form inside the Russell 2000, but it would, it would be lovely to have a unanimous vote out here with everybody forming the exact same pattern. Uh, to give us a little bit more confidence in a further move higher. So that's the general markets. That's the uh, equity future contracts. That's the U.S. dollar index. Now we'll get back to this break. We're going to take a look at Tesla and NVIDIA. And I'd love some more requests. Steve at TFN.com. Certainly any pink inside the tire stick. Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Adding stock options to your portfolio can be a major game changer, but the full complexities of these instruments can oftentimes elude even the most experienced traders. Whether you're a seasoned trader looking to sharpen your knowledge on options or you're completely new to the market, Teddy Kekstat is here to help. On Wednesday, September 27th from 4 p.m. to 5 p.m. Eastern Time, Teddy is hosting a live stream that will teach you how to capitalize on time with calendar stock option spreads. Teddy will also go over how to trade stocks and other market movements without large capital allocation, how to expand portfolio diversification, how to maximize potential returns, basic entry and exit techniques, and more. If that wasn't enough of a reason to attend, Teddy will also be answering all questions live. If you're serious about making money in this market, head over to the front page of TFNN.com today to sign up for Teddy's live stream. 
TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We still got all U.S. indices trading to the downside. The uh, spot volatility is up by over 10% right now as we speak. So you want to watch that at day's end. If it does have a one-day rate of change above 10%, expect at least an overnight rally attempt out there. Um, so that's what we'll be watching for at day's end. Right now, we'll take a look at the charts here for Tesla. Daily time frame shows us what? Daily time shows us right now that price is trading below its oscillator and change line, which is green, and below its daily profile level. So odds favor, and there's an A to B equal CD to the downside pattern that is present. There's no bearish or bullish reversal candle as we speak just yet. Close to a hammer candle, close but no cigar yesterday. So A to B would look like this. This is more of a A to B, a one to, more than a one-to-one -one extension out there. So so one of the things that you'd be looking for here, John, in order for Tesla to give you a bottom signal would be a bullish reversal candle. Short of that, odds favor that price is making its way down towards its TD9 count breakout area. That TD9 count breakout area is at 228.18. That is the message of the daily time frame chart. The weekly time frame chart shows us a consolidation. No, it shows that price is trading bull. No, a consolidation with inside a new profile. That formed last week. The resistance level on that is at 272.32. The center's at 252. We're trading below the center right now. We're trading below its oscillator and change line. So what is opened is 232.35. So right now, short of any other patterns that we take a look at, Tesla suggests that it wants to move back towards the 228.18 to 232.35 level. Those are where the buyers are sitting. If we look at the monthly time frame chart, let me try to populate this. I don't know why it didn't populate. Uh, the monthly chart right now is showing that price is above profile, but below that green oscillator and change line. It's telling us on a monthly basis, lost momentum out here. So it's lost momentum. Its next area of support is at 229.53. So now we've got the target level. It's between 228.18, 229.53, and 232.35. That's what the daily, the weekly, and the monthly charts show us. What else do we know about the daily time frame chart for Tesla? Well, we know that Tesla moved lower for three consecutive sessions out here. And when it typically does that you get a one to two or maybe even a three bar rally so to expect a further rally today makes a lot of sense out there that rally should end today or perhaps tomorrow out there when we take a look at tesla with regard to consecutive moves higher and lower it's just understanding its dance steps another dance step out here could be the 30 minute time frame let's see what it has to offer us it shows what it shows a wave number seven bottom pattern out here. That took place at, uh, was confirmed at 10.30. That was 10.30 on yesterday morning. That has led to nothing. So this is perfect for um, for um, Dizzle inside the Tiger's Den. Dizzle, take a look at this. You want to understand market profiles. During that last half hour coming at 11.30, why did price stop at 248.64? Without those profiles, we would not have been able to answer that question, period. There's no way we would have been able to answer that question looking at this chart on a 30-minute basis for Tesla. But having those profiles gives you and I a competitive advantage out there. In fact, if Tesla were to close above 248.64, this is for John C., that would be suggesting that we wait for a further rally to the upside because price will have taken out resistance. Now, it needs to close above that level for two consecutive bars to truly have some meaning. So you've just got a consolidation on the short-term basis, longer-term, daily, weekly, it's suggesting it wants to get back towards those other support levels out there. So that's what we see at the moment with regard to Tesla. John C., I hope that that helps you out. Yeah, there's a second request, and that second request was to take a look at NVIDIA. So we take a look at NVIDIA. This thing has had quite a stumble from its high. Remember that big high, that big seller Celebration Day of August 24th. And there was big volume. There was 115 million shares up at that high. So that high is likely to be tested again. I mean, that's gigantic volume. But that was obviously a blow off top. And that's just taken price all the way back really to the bottom of its profile back here. Now, there's a new profile that formed yesterday. And that's what it's trading in right now, John. And that profile has supported 4.1481 and resistance in the range of, in the range of because it is a bearish structured daily profile. So your sellers, 
Sellers reside between 42482 and 42983. If price was able to, if this was able to rally, then the key level of resistance above 42983 is going to be around 437 and change. Right now it's 437 and three cents, four cents, five cents. So don't worry so much about the pennies, but that would be the next level of resistance that Nvidia would have to close above to suggest that there is something else going on here. But right now, Nvidia on a daily basis uh, does not have a bottom pattern. Well, let me take a look at this. Now, hold on a minute here, Stevie. You might have misspoke. So the, the problem here, this is what I hate, in order to draw in an A to B equals CD pattern out here, really, I'd have to use the same swing point for both the low and the high. And I just simply hate doing that. Um, I can do it, but right now we're going to go with no A to B, no clear A to B equals CD pattern to the uh, downside out there. Uh, but we do have prices consolidating with inside its daily profile. Now, John C., you can also see you've got a Rosemont indicator top on the weekly time frame that has led to nothing more than a consolidation with inside its profiles out there. Again, uh, for Dizzle, you can see these profiles in action right now we can see that the key area of support out here is 408.99 if price closed below 408.99 what does that tell us well that tells us that we should see lower price and where would the lower price be inside of uh, tesla will certainly be back at its lows out here and that swing point low the key swing point low out here is august the 14th and that august 14th low is 403.11 so even if we get it closed below 408.99 still 403.11 is going to be the key level that if price closed below that that tells us we're getting to lower price now on a monthly basis and we're only in september 20 six so we've got a few days out here but right now all that it, what it looks like to me is you're going to get both a confirmed roadsman indicator top and a confirmed td9 count top on a longer term basis inside of nvidia so what this is really setting up for you and i this is setting up that nvidia they really want to move quite a bit lower. Now, that quite a bit lower, we've already talked about the levels that price would need to take out to tell us that it's moving lower. And again, just to restate that, that's going to be the low from the trading session of August 14th. That low is 403.11. If you get a close below that, then 364.97 or thereabouts really becomes the price target. That would be that monthly oscillator unchange line. So that's what I see when we take a look at NVIDIA for the daily, the weekly, and the monthly time frame. If we take a look at NVIDIA right now with regard to its dance steps, today could be bar number three of a move higher out there and inside of uh, nvidia right now having those bearish messages that's probably the extent of the uh, rally out here which would be a three bar rally that should then lead to a two to three bar move to the downside out there as it continues to do its little dance but right now the weekly and the monthly the larger time frames are saying just be careful out there no key levels of support have broken but if they do these larger charts are telling you that price might want to get much lower. That much lower can actually take you to 270, 240. That would be quite a haircut from the 500 plus level that it was at just a few weeks ago. So I hope that helps you out, John C., with regard to NVIDIA. And thanks so much for taking the time to write in. The next request coming in from Jambalaya inside the Tiger's Den. And Jambalaya wants to take a look at both copper and F. Uh, CX out here. And the reason, if we take a look at, in fact, let me pull up my other chart. Let me see if I can find it. It's on the black background screens. I think I've got FCX out here. And give me a moment. We'll just try to find it. If it pops up real quickly, we'll pull that up. I've got FFF. Where is it? FCX, Australian dollar correlation. Yeah, I've got that. I, um, what I didn't do, and what we'll do that, uh, what we'll do is we'll put the, uh, so let's do this here, because he's asking about both copper and FCX, because that's the primary component of it. So we'll do this here. Uh, in this break, I'm going to go ahead and get the uh, historical information up on uh, Freeport McMoran, and uh, we'll be right back. Of course, I'd love to hear from you at 877-927-6648, or you can send me an email, steve at tfnn.com. We'll be right back. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. 
The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. To Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. So we're going to do a very thorough review on FCX. And the reason is because it's got a couple of different correlations that you want to be paying attention to. So the first one that we're going to take a look at here is going to be... Oh, I know what I need to also do. Give me a moment here. Sorry about that. Um, give me a moment to get back to something else, too. Did I put it here? No, that's Tesla. Uh, that's probably here on this third dollar. Okay, great. Okay, so the first correlation that we've got up here at Jambalaya is at the top I've got the Australian dollar, and at the bottom I've got FCX. And what you're going to want to watch here, watch the cursor line that I've got. So here's the high with regard to the Australian uh, dollar out here. Here's a high. And and take a look at you know when FCX topped, right around that high back here on February of 2023. The Australian dollar moved lower. What did FCX do? It also moved lower. So when you are trading FCX, you are also trading the currency pair. We take a look at um, the slow out here inside of uh, Tesla, inside of uh, Australian dollar. There was a, a low that came in on the trading session of that lasted uh, on June the 1st out there. And what did we see? Or right, uh, was that the third? I'm sorry, that was on May 31st. And what did we see FCX do from there? Once that Australian dollar started to move higher, so too did FCX. So just be aware of that correlation that exists out there. What other correlation? Well, you've pointed out the other correlation. That's pretty clear because of its major crop being copper. Here is the uh, FCX chart compared to uh, the continuous contract for copper. This is just simply looking at a five-day correlation. And what we can say here is that FCX has a direct correlation to copper. So in order to properly trade FCX, you need to know what's going on inside the Australian dollar, and you need to go with what's going on inside of a copper. Now, with regard to the Australian dollar, I'll just simply pull over this chart, and then we'll go switch and take a look at the copper charts out here. So we take a look at the Australian dollar. This is a daily time frame. All that we see right now is just a consolidation sideways. I don't see any kind of a bottoming pattern 
although you could draw it in A to B equals CD to the downside. That's been confirmed a couple of different times out there. When I say you could draw it in, it would look like this. The A to B point out here for copper, this would be the short one. So the short one, you can see this is all we're dealing with is an expansion of that A to B, C, A to B of that um, A, B, C, D pattern out here. The larger A to B equals C, D pattern, let's see if the large one has uh, gone ahead. Oops, got to grab the right uh, tool out here. Give me a moment. So here's A. This would be the next one that I would draw in. And I'll just take that over to the C point. That's the next, that's the highest high out there. So that large one we can say uh, has completed more than a one to one. So we're looking for bullish reversal candles. And you've got one right here. You've got a nice bullish engulfing candle. That says that if X, uh, we're looking at the Australian dollar, the Australian dollar were to close below 0.6367, that tells us it's headed lower. There's also wave seven bottom. Okay, I see that as well. So you've got that wave seven bottom out there. So we do have a bottom inside the Australian dollar but watch that low I'd watch the low of that wave seven bottom that's one that would negate all of these that's 0.6357 so that's the first thing now let's go take a look at what copper is doing for that we're going to go ahead and change screens and I'm going to change to a different set of panels out there again we know the core if you're trading FCX you can't just trade well you can do whatever you want I'm suggesting I'm sharing with you and showing with you that maybe what you ought to also be considering is what's going on inside the Australian dollar and high grade copper. Now we'll switch over to those white background charts. We're going to have our multi time frame charts for high grade copper. So we'll move over to there, and here you've got the monthly time frame. What's the monthly time frame telling us? It's telling us about a consolidation with inside its profile level. So support here on copper, this is a bearish structured profile, and on a monthly basis, a close below the center of that profile would suggest a run back to 333. The weekly time frame chart shows us that an A to B equals CD pattern would form if price were to close below this weekly hammer candle. That was the weekly hammer candle that formed on May 26. That low out there is $3.58. Price right now is testing the bottom of its weekly profile. The bottom there is 3.640. If you get a close below that on a Friday, that says that that hammer candle is likely to be tested. And if it gets taken out, you'll have an A to B equals CD to downside. So if you get that, that's taught us that FCX would also move lower. On a daily time frame, if there's going to be a savior out here with regard to high-grade copper, the savior would be a TD9 count. We talked a lot today about the TD9 counts that are showing up on the daily time frame charts here. Certainly copper and the equity markets tend to, not always, but tend to move in a similar direction out there. So we've got TD9 counts, bar number eight, forming the ESCNQ and the Dow. Right now, the Russell still needs to push lower in order for that to happen. Here we take a look at copper. It too is in bar number eight. Now, in order for copper to form a TD9 count tomorrow, it just simply needs to close below the close of bar number five, and that closes $3.69 out there. So on a daily basis, you've got the potential for a bottom that likely takes place between today and Thursday out there. So that's going to be helpful in now analyzing and moving over to take a look at FCX. So Stevie, let's finally do that. Now let me close out these charts here. Um, and uh, we'll, then we'll get over to the daily time frame here for FCX. I think that was panel number three. Give me a moment here. Panel number three. There we go. So we got FCX. Now, well, we just took a look with regard to copper, TD9 count potential over the next couple of days. We do not have any kind of a bottom signal inside of FCX. In fact, what we have out here is an A to B equals CD to the downside. Now, I don't know if it's been confirmed or not. It doesn't have to be confirmed in order for it to actually go ahead and complete. If it has confirmed, meaning it's past that B point with volume, it just favors that it's going to go ahead and make that completion. That completion would take you down an FCX to about 3490 or so. Now that B point out here of that A to B equals CD had volume of 8.4 million shares. When it was passed, it was passed with a gap to the downside and it was 12 million shares. FCX has a confirmed A to B equals CD to downside that should take you into that 34-ish, 35-ish uh, area out there. The weekly time frame chart for FCX shows that it too is forming an A to B equals CD to downside. Let's take a look at that pattern because that is a larger one. Now, FCX formed a TD9 count top on that weekly time frame. So we take a look at that A to B equals CD. Again, we'll just simply go ahead and duplicate that and move that down. Let's see what that does. That gets us down more towards the $36, $35, $34 area. Yeah, so that's about a $34.78. I would say in this instance here, price would likely go ahead and target $33.31 out there. So right now, the daily and the weekly time frames, and the weekly, by the way, when it passed its B point, just out of curiosity, that B point had 42 million shares. It was passed and confirmed last week with 47 million shares. So you've got two confirmed A to B equals CD patterns to the downside, Jambalaya. On a monthly time frame chart, price is still above 
key resistance, which is the top of its profile. Now, if it's only a counter trend move to the downside, where FCX should find support is at 3296, the center of that bearish structured profile. That price has been above for quite some time out there. So I would say at this date here, first, keep your eye on the Australian dollar. See if that we know that it's got that little wave seven bottom, but if that gets taken out, that's going to confirm what we're looking at here in the bigger picture, that this is going to move lower. Watch copper as well. It's got that potential for a TD9 count. Watch it over the next couple of days. But right now, I'd stay away from FCX until you get confirmation for both copper, Dr. Copper, and the Australian dollar. So jambalaya, maybe you got a little bit more than you bargained for, but I don't know any other way to analyze FCX than taking a look at those correlations out there. So I hope that that helps you out, and thank you so much for the request. Inside the Tiger's Den, we've got a dude, and that dude wants to take a look at USO. So let's just populate this set of charts out here. What we'll do is we're going to go to a break here in about 15 seconds or so, or at least the music is going to start playing. So what we will look at is we will take a look at USO, and in order to take a look at that, you know what that means. We've also got to take a look at light Swede crude. Right now, you've just got a consolidation inside of USO, and that's between the price level of 77.81 and 81.34, and it's a bullish structured profile, so on a pullback, USO should find support between 77.81 and 78.20. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. Adding stock options to your portfolio can be a major game changer, but the full complexities of these instruments can oftentimes elude even the most experienced traders. Whether you're a seasoned trader looking to sharpen your knowledge on options or you're completely new to the market, Teddy Kekstat is here to help. On Wednesday, September 27th from 4 p.m. to 5 p.m. Eastern Time, Teddy is hosting a live stream that will teach you how to capitalize on time with calendar stock option spreads. Teddy will also go over how to trade stocks and other market movements without large capital allocation, how to expand portfolio diversification, how to maximize potential returns, basic entry and exit techniques, and more. If that wasn't enough of a reason to attend, Teddy will also be answering all questions live. If you're serious about making money in this market, head over to the front page of TFNN.com today to sign up for Teddy's live stream. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. 
TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. So we've got still all the U.S. equities uh, indices that we track trading to the downside. The same thing with regard to the sectors inside the S&P 500. And right now what we're going to do, let me see what screen I'm on. We're going to go take a look at USO, and that is for dude inside the Tigers. And where did I put that chart? Did I put that here? Nope, that was Tesla. Give me a moment. Sorry, a little, uh, a little out of sorts here this morning. Now, NVIDIA. Let's try USO. So my question to you out there, those of you that trade the USO, uh, we know that this is directly related to Lightspeed Crude. What charts, what's the, what's the underlying instrument? I just kind of gave it away, didn't I? Well, sort of, because it's a trick question. So here's my question to you. If you trade USO, what is it that you think that you are trading? That's the question. Now, many people would say, oh, it's trading Lightspeed Crude, and so let's just go take a look at what Lightspeed Crude is doing right now. And if that was your answer, well, then I would have to say you're wrong. It's always important. Here, let me just, what screen am I on? I'm on this screen right here. Let's go take a look at what are the holdings with inside of USO right now. And right now, 40% of that is in November. It's the active contract. 40%, only 40% is the active contract that we're taking a look at. 15% happens to be December of 2023. Another 15% is January of 24. And 15% is June of 2024. And then you've got the last 5% is going to be March of 2024 out there. So it is not a matter of just take a look at what the November contract for Lightspeed Crude is doing if you trade USO. There are many times where people will be trading this instrument. I've heard it before. And they're trading USO. And they're seeing Lightspeed Crude move higher in the current contract. But they're not seeing the same thing with regard to USO. Why is that? Oh, we didn't even get to it. I didn't realize we were at the end of the show. Oh, son of a gun out there. And I spent time getting that chart set up. We'll just simply do it, my apology, but you're trading those contracts. Tomorrow, during the show, we'll take a look at Lightspeed Crude. We'll take a look at each of those contracts. I'm going to put them up on my screen right now because you're inside the tire presents. You can take a look at that. We'll go ahead. We'll do a full review for you tomorrow. Folks, have a terrific Tuesday. We'll see you tomorrow.